The seven most common mistakes home buyers make. The more experience you have with buying real estate, the more you will learn about the complicated process. Between confusing terminology and the logistics of buying a house, it's all too easy to make the wrong move and wind up with an unwise investment. If you're a first time home buyer, buy, bypass buyer's remorse by knowing the most common pitfalls and how to avoid them. Number one, not getting your pre-approved before you shop. The last thing you want to do is fall in love with a house you can't afford. To prevent that, before, before you do anything, get pre-approved for a mortgage. You need to know what you can afford and what the monthly payments look like. A good mortgage, mortgage broker will figure this out for you. And while a bank will usually pre-approve you for a higher amount, you don't want to overextend yourself. Be realistic about what you, what you can actually afford. You're a stronger buyer if you're already pre-approved when you make an offer on a house. Number two, not seeking advice from an experienced professional. Despite so much information available online, you should still seek the advice of an experienced professional early on in the home buying process. Realtors educate people about the process, who they need to consult, if they need an attorney, and when they'll have to have their own down payment ready. And, and we can give value insights into the neighborhoods you're looking at. An added bonus, sometimes real estate agents have access to property before it goes onto the market. Finding a real estate agent to work with is important, so take your time to find one who is a good match for your personality and preferences. You're going to be spending a lot of time together throughout the process. Number three, not making an inf informed offer. A common home buying mistake is letting your emotions dictate the offer. Instead, only make an offer if you're really serious about buying a property and make sure it's based on comparable sales rather than just how much you like the house. Ultimately, the price should reflect the market's value of the home. The ideal negotiation is when the buyer and seller both feel like they've won. Then the negotiations between your opening offer and your ideal number is where working with the real estate pro really comes in handy. Number four, not being able to see the house beyond its current condition. This is potentially a two pronged issue and both can be problematic. This first scenario is finding a house updated with beautiful finishes, fixtures and decor. We call it eye candy. People get so busy looking at the superficial details and forget about things that they can change about the house, like the location, the yard, or things that's on a or that's on a busy road. On the other hand, shoppers may overlook a home that needs paint and cosmetic updates, but has great bones and a good location. When shopping for a house, be co cognizant of cosmetic details that can be altered easily, as well as an issue that are the issues that are expensive or impossible to fix. Number five, making an emotional rather than a business decision. You never want to fall so in love with your house that you're emotionally invested in the purchase. If you love it so much that you feel like you'll do anything to get the property, you, end, you can end up overpaying for the home. That can lead to buyer's remorse and feeling like you didn't get the best deal. The buying process is emotional enough and that's why you want someone on your side that can keep your emotions in check through the close. You've You've seen, we've seen deals fall apart from something as small as a missing light fixture. Stay level-headed and remember that this is a serial, serious commitment that you will have to live with for years to come. Number six, only looking at mortgage rates from one lender. Ensure you, you'll, you do your due diligence when it comes to your, first, to your mortgage. Speak to an experienced loan officer who will find the best rates and mortgage products. Talk to your loan officer about your personal needs so they can help steer your, you toward the best mortgage for you and your family. You can save a lot of money that way, especially if you are a first time home buyer. Number seven, applying for lines of credit or making large credit purchases. Buying a house is a big enough purchase, so just focus on that. You shouldn't simultaneously be shopping for a car, buying furniture or opening new credit card. Your credit score gets dinged when you open a new line of credit. It can impact your pre-approval, mortgage approval, and create a big mess for the underwriter. It can even delay your closing. Once you've closed on the house, then make your next 